typical of the way I do things and the way I operate, I started on a project and got distracted and started to do another project, which involved cutlery, of course, and started to work on it. Then it hit me. This is something I could show you. That maybe might come in handy if you are a collector of GEC knives. I'm not sure which model this is. It's the Takosa or Takaloka or Kamana Wanalea. I'm not sure. But it's nice bone. I think they do a nice job. I like their knives. But it's a crapshoot when you order a lockback from them. They're a neat lockback. I like the way they do it. There's no spring on the inside like on most lockbacks. But buck 110, hey, you're never going to see that in there, but there's a round bar that pushes against the locking bar to keep it locked. Not the case with these GECs. There's a little coil spring up under there, which is your downward force that keeps it locked. These knives, unless you buy it from a dealer in the store, you can't feel how the lockup is. And that's why I said it's a crapshoot. So this one came to me. It's been sitting on a shelf for two years because it had a little bit of up and down wiggle. I mean, for 99% of you guys, it would have been fine. There's that 1% that goes, that's annoying as hell. Well, that's me. So I want to show you how I fixed that. And I fixed it on two of these knives so far. One was a larger one of these. Uh, and with the stainless steel blades. And then this one. It's simple. And it's repeatable. And there's not a whole lot of prep time. So let's take the walk over to the vise and get set up. I'll do this at a couple different angles just to show you what to do. I taped the jaws of the vise. Put this in the vise. And really honk down on it. There you go. That's not going anywhere. There's no way you can hammer here and not gar that up or mar that up or F that up. So what you have to do is put one hammer there and then hit with another hammer not flat you don't want to do this flat you want to be at a slight angle to peen that surface over this way so that when these lock up it closes that gap and you get less wiggle so I'm going to do one more little tap so you can see what's happening here. So what you're doing is banging on that edge and effectively lengthening the spine of that blade so that when it does this that mates up with that. And there should be no wiggle. There's just a wee bit of wiggle still. So I'm going to tap again. And I'm going to call it a day on that because you can't go too far. So again, I'm recapping, but sometimes it's good to see it from different angles. Hammered there. So that it closed that gap and eliminated up and down wiggle. 
And because I'm a little OCD about my knives, this is a strop. And I'm just going to clean up the spine a little bit from those marks. And that did a nice job. Every workbench should have a toothpick handy. Let gravity be your friend. Looks like a little mark there. Roll it side to side. You'd be, how, you'd be amazed how fast you can clean up a knife using a strop with worn out compound on it. I mean, you can already see there's brass on there, just from those couple little strokes. And this is how you achieve pocket worn. I'm just rounding out sharp edges. Okay. There you go. So, that took what? Three minutes? And that included me stopping to show you what I was doing. Now I just wanted to show you the simple way to take up a little bit of space on a lockback, and I don't care what lockback it is. You can't do it on the Ultimate Hunter because that has its own patented whiz-bang, super-duper, nifty, space-age locking mechanism. On your Buck 110s and any old-fashioned, regular kind of lockback, this should work just fine. Give it a try. Go slow. You can always tap a little bit more. You can't untap. Remember that. Then if you do go too far, you have to get out the files and be really super careful about that. And that's a complete pain in the keister. Trying to keep it clean, boys and girls.